Hello, my name is Christy Landwehr and I am with the Certified Horsemanship Association. And today we have both a teaching and a riding tip brought to you by CHA. It's going to be about different exercises on horseback to do with different levels of riders. Today I'm at the beautiful Kentucky Horse Park and we have all registered American Quarter Horses in our class today. We have students from the Asbury University and it's a pleasure to be here. Okay, so right now today we have everyone just starting at the walk please. And let's go ahead and think about our plumb line. So when we ride a horse, we have to have a straight line from our heels, elbows, hips, and ears. And with that straight line, think about it like this. If I took the horse out magically from underneath you, you would land straight up and down. Okay, so right now, glance just a little bit in front of your knee and you should not be able to see your toe. So everyone, look down. Glance just a little bit in front of your knee. You should not be able to see your toe. If you see your toe, you're in a chair seat and you need to think about moving your thigh back from the hip. Okay, you also want to look at the side of your um, leg and you want to be able to just see the outside of your stirrup. So ladies, go ahead and glance down. Everybody should be able to see the outside of their stirrup. That means that you're doing what's called pronating your ankles, which means that you're on your big toe side of your stirrup. Your calf is rolled in on the horse and that's proper leg position, regardless if you're riding in an English or a Western saddle. So as we're walking along, the other straight line that I'm looking for, ladies, is going to be direct contact from the horse's bit up through your reins and up through your hands. Very nice. And you want a nice following hand as you go. Good. So what we do, we just at the walk, just establish a good rhythm and make sure that we have that basic plumb line. So reality is, when we ride our horses, sometimes we lose a stirrup. Normally you don't lose both simultaneously. So a really important exercise is to go ahead and ride with just one stirrup. So right now the riders are going to go by on the rail with just one stirrup and we're going to be practicing picking those stirrups up and dropping them without ever looking down or actually physically leaning over and putting our foot in the stirrup as that can be quite dangerous. So as we come along here we'll notice with Paige. Paige, go ahead and drop your inside stirrup please. That'll be the stirrup closest to me. Go ahead and take your foot out of the stirrup. And she still wants to have her heel down, she still wants to have her toe slightly up, she still wants to have that bend in her knee, and she actually wants to keep her foot on this side just like it would be if it was on the other side, so that she's even still on both of her seat bones. Paige, if you want to go ahead now and rotate your toe in and pick up your stirrup, and keep working on it until you get that done. Very nice. Sometimes with western saddles you'll need to broomstick your stirrups to make sure that that's easy so that the fenders bend properly for the rider to be able to do that exercise. What I'm going to go ahead and have um, our friend here, Holly, on the Palomino do, go ahead and also drop just your inside stirrup. Good. And I want you to do a leg lift. I want you to physically lift your leg like this, Miss Holly. Very nice. And back down, up and back down. This engages the hip. It gets the rider to sit deep on her pockets. Very nice. You can go ahead and stop and pick back up your stirrup. Thank you. This next exercise is up in two point at the walk. And Jensen, if you could go ahead and pick up on your outside rein. You want to make sure both of your reins have even direct contact pressure. Very nice. And just kind of close your hip angle. Go ahead and sit a little bit deeper in the saddle. Go ahead and go a little bit closer. Good. And you can go ahead and have hands on the neck. You don't have to hold mane, but you can rest your pinkies on the neck for support. Good. And in this position, the rider wants to go ahead and elongate through their leg. They don't want to pinch with their knee and they want to be just slightly forward. If you want to go ahead and come along with Jessica and you could also do your two point position. And in the two point position, this is great for going over a log on the trail. This is great for if you're going on a very long trail ride to get off of your horse's back and be able to give your horse a rest. The reason why it's called two points is that there's two contact points that the rider is putting on the horse both inside thighs. Normally we ride in what's called three point because our seat is also included. Jessica, go ahead now and put your reins in one hand and put the other hand out to the side and do big backward circles with that hand. This is a great way to establish balance and rhythm with a rider. You can do all kinds of exercises like this while you're in two point. Next rider, if you want to come along, Miss Paige, go ahead and go into your two point position as well. So we just go up just a little bit and as we're up, we can do all kinds of the different arm exercises. Go ahead and take your hand and put it on top of your helmet, please. So put your reins in one hand, very nice. Now while you're up in two point, put it forward for me. Just a little bit, very nice. Now you're gonna put it back, just like this, with your hand out, very nice, with the palm out. This lifts through the sternum. This actually gets your shoulders back and gets you lifted. Super, now go ahead and put both hands back on the reins and sit back on the horse very gently and kindly and get your leg back behind you, please. So now we're gonna go ahead and go up to the sitting trot. 
um, sometimes called the jog. We need to get this horse a little bit slower though if we were going to do the jog. Just a little check release. Go ahead and think about bending, very relaxed down. Your shock absorbers are going to be your hips and they're going to be your ankles. But you still, as you do this, the next rider can come along. You want to make sure that you have still that straight line. So Jensen, as you're riding, go ahead and close your legs and pick up jog. As you're riding, will you please still do me a favor and glance down peripherally and check that your leg is back behind your knee. So you just want to check that. You also can still check to the side and make sure that you can see the outside of your stirrup just a little bit. Think about bringing your lower leg back from the hip and don't ride back on the cantle of your saddle. Try to stay in the middle of your saddle. All right, and now we'll go ahead and still jog, but let's go ahead and do two point. All right, Miss Jessica? So up into two point we go. Reins in one hand. You can hold main if you need to. If not, you're fine just resting. Good, and while we're up in two point, the other hand is in rein, just like you're holding the rein, and we're very balanced right in between there. Very nice. Next rider, Miss Paige, if you want to go ahead and pick up your jog. And what she's going to do now, you can escalate this based on your level of rider. Go ahead and gather up your reins. You can also go into your two point at the jog. And while she's up, go ahead and put your reins in one hand. And she can do big backward circles with her arms. Always backwards. This keeps the chest open, keeps the sternum lifted. Do not go forwards with your arms. Very nice. Go ahead and put your hands back on the reins. The posting trot is a position that we want to do regardless of what saddle we're in. It's very important to be able to get up and off the horse's back and let the horse move freely under us, unless obviously we're doing western show riding. Here you can see Paige is going up and down with the outside leg going forward. That's called being on the correct side diagonal. And it's based on the bend, not necessarily just the wall. It's the outside shoulder that's going forward first based on bend. Now we're gonna have Jessica come around and what she's gonna demonstrate is she's gonna demonstrate posting and changing our diagonal every three strides. So she's gonna go ahead and post three and sit one. And I will call it out so you can kind of see what that looks like. So Jessica, as you're posting, we're gonna sit every third, all right? So we're gonna go one, two, three, sit, sit, one, two, three, sit, sit, one, two, three, sit, sit, one, two, three, sit, sit. Very nice. So you can do that with every two strides, every five strides, every other stride. Up, sit, sit, up, sit, sit. Or you can make it harder for your rider and do the actual change of the diagonal in midair instead of actually sitting. And that's another way to challenge your riders, all depending on what level they're at in their skills. So there's many different ways to ride at the trot or the jog. There's obviously sitting, posting, two point. We also have a YouTube video that explains the difference between balance seat, half seat, and light seat. Today our primary ones are going to be the sitting trot, the posting trot, and also two point. So now we're going to have um, Holly go and she's going to be posting the trot. And as she posts the trot, I don't mind what diagonal she's on, that's not of importance to me. She's going to put her reins in one hand right now. She's going to take the other hand and she's going to lift it straight up in the air. Now she's going to put it on her helmet. Now she's going to put it out to the side and do the big backward circles. That's almost like when you pat your head and rub your stomach simultaneously. Sometimes that can be very challenging for someone who's learning how to post to do the arm exercises. And again, it ups the ante. All of these exercises that we're doing today can also be done on the lunge line. Sometimes it's a great idea if you're not in the group environment to have a private lesson and have the rider experience doing some of these exercises with absolutely no reins at all. That's another wonderful way to get this done. So when your riders are starting to be able to do more at the canter and the lope and can actually start incorporating exercises, you can do a variety of them. Here we're going to take Jessica to the test and do a variety of them all at once. So Jessica, go ahead and establish a circle. And I want you to go ahead and drop your inside leg. And then go ahead and once you get in back on the rail, put your reins in one hand. Go ahead and put your hand up in the air. Keep establishing forward motion. Hand on top of your helmet. Hand out to the side with big backward circles. Good, and then finally in between your shoulder blades with your palm out. Very nice. And go ahead and come back down to walk. And please praise Diesel. And that was both a riding and an instructing tip brought to you by the Certified Horsemanship Association.